Um, my name is Jerry Berman. I'm the chair of the Internet Caucus Advisory Committee. Um, I want to welcome you all to our eighth State of the Net uh, conference. Uh, we started the, the Internet Caucus and the Advisory Committee, and I'm reminded by some of my friends who are going to be speaking soon. We started this organization 15 years ago when we were debating, just after the debate on the Communications Decency Act, which I had the privilege of, or at least the, the, uh, was part of the, the effort to overturn that act. But what we discovered in Congress was that no matter what side of the issue you were on, uh, there was enormous confusion about the internet technology. Congress kind of looked at it and said it's a TV set. And if it's a TV set, we can regulate it in the same way that we regulate broadcast network news and content. We had to educate Congress that that was not the case, that this was a broad, global, decentralized, empowering, accessible internet that was going to be an explosive new technology. And that whatever your position on any issue, it was important to understand the technology and to find solutions through debate, bipartisan debate, that promoted the openness, the decentralization, and the empowering potential of the internet. And so when we first started, uh, it was a, a dial-up world. And one of our chief tasks with the caucus was to try and help congressmen and congresswomen uh, learn about the internet and create a website. Uh, that's how far we've come, from a dial-up world to a broadband world to a disaggregated world where all devices are connected. When the internet, when we founded this organization, the internet was a footnote in the communications rewrite of 1996. The, the vision of Congress and the public was an information highway running bi-directional with 500 channels and some would say nothing on. The internet was a footnote and the Communications Decency Act, and now it is front and center as the architecture of our global communications. Billions are, of people are on the internet. They love it. They understand its potential. They, they are empowered by it. But what we wanted to do was not simply to continue to try and understand and among ourselves what the technology could do and how it was evolving because it was important to understand that, but particularly that we all understood, particularly the people in this room, that the internet, to the extent that it's free and open, rides on a policy architecture. That it's not just the technology's potential. The technology turns on what kind of policies we design to solve problems without breaking the openness of the internet. So whether we were working on free speech or privacy, or liability of intermediaries, we were always taking into account that that architecture of decentralization was both important in terms of technology, but also policy. The issues would change. The applications have changed profoundly. There was no Twitter. There was no Facebook. There was no Google. Um, there was no social media. The, there was no Web 2.0. We were just starting with the World Wide Web 0.10. But all of those changes, we are still debating the same fundamental issues. Will there be free speech on the internet? What are the, the responsibilities of intermediaries on the internet? Can we protect privacy? Because the internet is both a technology of freedom, but it's also a technology of control, because everything is copied. And we need to protect, whether it's geo-positioning technology or information, we need to protect privacy. We need to protect our values. But we do that together and working together. The State of the Net Conference was designed to bring us together on an annual basis, and it's, and it's become part of the, the DNA of our policy framework in Washington, to come together and talk about the issues, to debate them in a fair and balanced Fox News <laughs> kind of way, but to essentially uh, hear all sides and try and find solutions that promote values, whether it's IP or free speech or privacy, without breaking the net. We start off today with, with two speakers who can give us 
an overview of some of where the internet is and how does it protect freedom overseas, how does it ensure a competitive platform so that it can promote innovation and commerce and speech and empower new, new devices and new applications.